sometimes you just need a little ah oh, in your life. Dizzy. Oh, you know how it is. The busy, busy day in and day out helter skelter of life. Plein air painting can be just that. It can be an ah to your week. No pressure, doesn't matter what you paint, doesn't really matter where you paint. Just go out and paint. Yeah, so we've been having some pretty good uh, August weather for South Carolina. Very few days in the 90s actually, and that's rare in the summer. Just wanted to get out to a lake and paint. I did have something in mind. Uh, I was interested in studying some reflections. Just that, just that simple. And that's all plein air needs to be. Just want to study one particular thing, a grouping of leaves, a few ripples in the water. Keep it simple. Grab your paints and go have some. Ah. Oh. Well, this is just a great location, and we only recently discovered Lake Cooley. Really not sure what I was going to paint. I just wanted to get here and take a look around. Set up. Figured I'd find something along the line of reflections. It is a lake after all. And the scene that you're about to see over my shoulder here is what I decided to do the first day. We, we split this up into two days because we ran out of time. If you see that far shore where you get all these neat little contrast bands and then it's reflected in the water. I'm not sure I did a great job of capturing that, but I thought it was very striking. All those trees lined up like that. Uh, I loved that. So I thought, yep, this will do. And it was just a beautiful day. Really had a good time just relaxing. Getting set up here with my Hanamula 100% cotton sketchbook. And Decided, just going to go for it. No drawing, just going to do some direct watercolor. Uh, I mean, after all, it's a pretty for forgiving subject. So... Had in mind that uh, I could use gouache if I needed to, and I take this one palette that is split. There you see it, gouache on the left, watercolor on the right. Um, I didn't use it a lot, I did use it to clean up some trees, which you'll see in a little bit. And here I'm just going to start backfilling some of those uh, nice pops of contrast I saw. Both in that ground band and then up in the foliage also. It was a kind of a challenge to paint around, but that's where the gouache will come in for a little bit of cleanup.
there's the gouache cleanup that I mentioned and you can see I used a Posca acrylic white pen for breaking up some of those reflections. The reflections were really a challenge because of the changing uh, dynamics and wind. The reflections would be there one moment and then they wouldn't be there. On to day two, I really wanted to do this pier, which I was not able to do uh, in day one. We ran out of time and just study some of those really neat dynamic reflections underneath the uh, pylons. Really cool. The problem here again was as the breezes picked up, those reflections became more and more complex. So that results in a lot of indecision. How do you paint them? It's always an adventure when you go plein air painting. So I'm up for the challenge. This time I sketched with a ballpoint pen and a water brush. All right, back at the studio, thought I'd show you what I ended up with after some studio tweaking. Uh, just a comment too. This is again, the Hanamula 100% cotton sketchbook. This is the landscape size. I think it's the same size as this. I bought two more because I'm really enjoying the sketchbook. Uh, so this is an A5 landscape. Uh, I also bought an A5 portrait and an A4 landscape which that's really cool so great cotton sketchbooks enjoying using them let's take a look did this as a spread so here's the finished spreads after some studio tweaking i didn't do a whole lot i just kind of sharpened up things and worked on the reflections a bit had I been able to be a little more decisive, I think uh, some of these reflections would have look, looked fresher, but I'm reasonably satisfied. What I did after I came back to the studio is just worked on these uh, white additions a little bit to break it up. And that's simply a Posca pen. If you're unfamiliar with Posca paint pens, they come in a number of sizes. I think this is the finest one. This is actually not the one I had in the field. Um, and it's plunger activated. You push it in and the paint comes. So it's a it's a waterproof uh, acrylic paint, which is what I like, which is one of the reasons I also use um, jelly rolls because they're permanent. Uh, whereas a lot of white pens are water soluble, but this works pretty well. This is actually the one I had with me in the field. You can see it's got uh, a bullet tip, so it's a little bit heavier. 
I also use some Jelly Roll for some really fine lines. Jelly Roll white tail pen. The other thing I did was I worked on breaking up these reflections a little bit. They looked a little too uh, vertically drawn and not as soft as I wanted them, but oh, I'm, I'm fairly happy. And I just, I'm real happy with the graphic nature of how these trees just lined up on the far bank. And then you had the dark shadows underneath the trees. And then you had sort of a hedgerow right along the water, then a dark shadow there. And it was all sort of hinted at in the reflection. So that was a challenge. It was a fun challenge, but it was something I enjoyed finding and trying to do. Now the dock, uh, I really enjoyed also. A couple things I did. You could see here was the original horizon line or lake line, water line, I should say. And that's actually higher than it was in reality. And the reason is because I was trying to avoid a tangent with the edge of this dock. So that was, I was just positioned poorly, but raising the shoreline up here made the perspective look off. So in the end, I came back and lowered the lake line. I could kind of clean up that line if I wanted to with some gouache. I don't know. I think for a sketch, it's fine. Uh, I don't like the tangent that's created. Tangents are considered bad in art because they are confusing, but I'd rather have the tangent than the perspective looking off. And with the lake line up, the perspective looked off. The only other things I did was clean up and go back and bolden up some of the outlines with pen. And I worked on the reflections, adding more uh, back here in the back and here, making uh, more of a deliberate pattern like I saw on location. It's sometimes difficult in locations when the conditions change and the breeze really kind of kept changing these reflections. So you're capturing a moment of time, and sometimes that is just a moment of time in your mind's eye. I always make sure I have photos and good video so that if I want to go back and do it again with a still image, I can do that. I still, though, I feel like being on location is very valuable for color, for value for dimension and depth, it just really kind of uh, helps you zero in on those things. Thank you so much, Minders, for joining me on this plein air adventure. It was fun. It puts some ah back into my week. Go out and do the same. Thank you, patrons, for your support. And we'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.